Hello and welcome to my workshop. Today I have a Bernina 930 on my um, workbench and uh, this is a machine that I really love um, working with. It has both, have both uh, mechanical and uh, electronic uh, electronical parts which is uh, nice to work with uh, and um, the result is a wonderful nice sewing machine off with the covers and um, of course uh, some of the covers are a little more tricky to remove um, uh, but uh, of course some screws and clips and we'll uh, able to we are able to remove everything I uh, removed the main board on the power supply here uh, and check out to see if there are some components to uh, uh, replace the, the machines. Those, this machine is uh, starting to get a little old, so some of the capacitors have a tendency to dry out and uh, cause problems. Of course, if there are the Reefa safety caps, I always replace it. The hook drive I remove to be able to um, see everything behind that one and uh, to clean it out um, back with the hand wheel and this machine have um, a sleeve behind there uh, with a hand wheel which are the, um, the needle stop function and when you Remove the top of the machine, the bobbin uh, winder mechanism are being removed and then you're not able to um, turn the hand wheel freely. So I have that little 3D printed uh, tool that I clipped in and uh, that makes me able to uh, turn the hand wheel freely. Uh, the long stitch, busting stitch, is what, I, is what I'm testing here and um, I've experienced some problems with it, so I'll try to see what's the exact problem and uh, you have a piston inside. You see there, when I click the part there, the handle, it releases the, the needle bar. But not every time, and when you're sewing, of course, the uh, this mechanism, 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 really have to work quickly. So, if there are some uh, parts in in there which are slowing it down uh, old oil or, or something which is holding the piston back it's uh, hopeless to to, um, to use that uh, so but now over to the oiling I'm going back to the um, busting uh, long stitch mechanism after uh, after a short uh, after finishing the the other oiling thin oil um, most of the places checking that everything is is moving freely uh, so every part. This is uh, go over and check, and here we come to the mechanism which are 
controlling the, the long stitch. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, some thread which is uh, stuck in between there. That oil is a little thicker than the other oil, so um, a few parts I use that a little thicker oil. Um, and here are the, the long stitch. Uh, mechanism um, so I'm oiling and going over that to see if there are something with um, mechanical parts here which is which are causing the problem uh, but I saw that the piston which is going into the, the needle bar um, makes some make some problems so I have to remove the remove the needle bar to be able to um, check out the release mechanism and this one is really stuck um, so to be able to remove it I had to use some uh, a slight amount of uh, violence force to um, free the needle bar. Yeah, there we have it. Free. And uh, <clears throat> of course, the, the, the reason why it's this, this part is stuck is the old oil which is uh, getting thicker and uh, uh, cleaning with um, cleaning alcohol is um, important so we, when I get it back together again um, it's um, only necessary with uh, new fine thin oil and it's uh, moving as it uh, supposed to a little tight in there and uh, freeing the needle bar is a little challenge but uh, there it is and you have the have the um, release mechanism there cleaning alcohol and going over this is uh, very important to clean remove all the grease and uh, old oil And of course it looks better it works uh, sometimes but not very good so I, I suppose it is the um, piston there and uh, it's a common problem uh, but here I um, uh, control the um, distance so when I put it back together again it's uh, easy to just use the same measurement as uh, it was originally so I lock the distance th distance there and then I can uh, remove that and um, take it apart and clean of course cleaning alcohol
There are the, um, the release decoupling part of the needle bar. It looks like um, it moves freely, but um, uh, there was some small, um, small, um, yeah, I felt it was not correctly. And uh, when trying to, to uh, take out the piston, it was really, really stuck. There it is. So hard to to take out this uh, this piston. So I really struggled with that. And uh, of course you have to be careful so you're not um, damaging any any part. Um, of course the metal part is is, is tougher, but uh, you have this. It's not uh, exactly uh, uh, plastic, it's some um, other material, which is harder than plastic, but um, yeah. So I try with, with cleaning alcohol and um, cleaning alcohol and some force. And um, being in um, in the frame is not the um, focus part. <laughs> it's uh, to remove that part, remove the piston. And uh, behind the piston there as well uh, is a very... Um, tiny uh, spring so I um, uh, have to be careful some the spring is uh, it's not uh, all over the place when uh, taking the, the piston out there's the spring and the piston and now I, it's important to Clean it very very good. Remove all the old oil. Uh, cleaning alcohol is uh, is my best friend. <laughs> it's is uh, I I use it a lot. But of course uh, on some models, some machines. Uh, you have to be careful to uh, when you use it because it can take uh, remove the paint. Uh, that's not so um, nice. Uh, on Bernina, it, it the, the paint is is sticking really good, so you can use cleaning alcohol on the the main paint. But on the decals on the the. Bernina writings, the text, the red, uh, you have to be careful. And don't ask me how I know that. Yep. Yeah. Now, it's, uh, trying to put it back together again. And um, even if you know how it is placed, it's tiny and you have the... the um, Piston spring loaded, and uh, if you push in the piston and uh, it slips, then you have both the piston and spring flying out in a direction you don't want it to go. I have to push in the <clears throat> push in the piston and uh, then put in the handle. I just lock it with a screwdriver. Uh, it was 
a little bit more um, grease, old oil to remove. So I'm back to my friend cleaning alcohol. And it's tiny, uh, so um, using tweezers or yeah, small screwdrivers and can be a little tricky sometimes to keep all the part in place as you want to so now it's just the circle clip which is left on uh, that part And then I went to um, lunch and uh, forgot to start the video when I came back. So voila, it's finished. <laughs> Trying to look at uh, the angle there. So I'm sure that um, yeah, the height there, so the parts are uh, correctly positioned and uh, the angle is correct and then I'm, I'm tightening it. So um, I have to, of course, recheck this when I put it back together, but as uh, much... Um, everything that I can do outside is of course uh, easier it's it's uh, yeah so I'm looking at the angle here and um, check if it's uh, correct and that's that's really important here because the piston is going into a little hole in the in the needle bar and uh, if the needle bar are a little bit twisted or yeah it's uh, it's not going into the hole so um, so it's not working at all it don't uh, the decoupling is not working at all Everything back in place. Oil. And uh, back in with the pin. Which is uh, much easier to put back. Cleaned with cleaning, uh, cleaning alcohol and uh, oiled. Uh, it's uh, much easier to to put back in place. And you have uh, some other parts there as well, which um, work together with. Uh, the decoupling of the needle bar and uh, the long stitch uh, mechanism. So the needle bar is a little more complicated, some more parts than uh, an ordinary needle bar. So But it's it's not um, it's not that uh, complicated really. It's um, when you look into it, it's um, it's nice. Uh, 
Bernina have a, a yeah, I really love how they, they did it. Cleaning the toothed rack there, and uh, of course the, the um, where the hook driver and the hook is is going. And uh, as I said, uh, I always remove the the hook drive. They're using a um, tweezer to remove the dirt and uh, uh, when you know how to to replace the hook drive it's it's i i do this on every machine it's really not any problem at all you have that easy uh, the, the the screw on the back side of the uh, arm easy to uh, to reach uh, you just um, uh, um, remove that screw and you, you uh, take out the hook drive and to get it correctly back in place you take the two set rack all the way over to um, right as far right as possible and when you insert it, you, as you see here, you, um, there, you align that part of the hook drive to the right inner side of the feed dog. And uh, then it's correctly uh, placed. So, and that's uh, the, the, uh, the CB hook bobbin is the same on everyone. So it's, it's not any problem at all to um, do that. So over to the electronics. Uh, you see here the part, uh, the um, blue ring is the safety caps that I'm um, replacing. The green ring there are the electrolytic capacitors and I also check the power resistors uh, the yellow um, rings there but um, uh, the the safety caps Rifa I always 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 replace with a new one uh, they are it's just a matter of time um, before they uh, explode, shortcuts or yeah, magic smoke releases. Uh, the electrolytic capacitors uh, I check to see uh, how um, how they are. Sometimes I measure them to see. And um, but in this case, I figured out to yeah, I just replace them with uh, with a new one. I have uh, have them in stock, and uh, of course, since I anyway, since I'm I'm sitting there with my soldering iron and removing. Uh, some uh, caps I can uh, take some more and with my uh, technique there holding the capacitor uh, component in place while uh, soldering it uh, with, uh, with um, soldering iron Checking that everything looks okay. So now the Rifa is gone. And that's a good feeling. Now it's time for the 
electrolytic capacitors. One, um, one uh, electrolytic capacitor, I think it was on, uh, was it in 910, which explodes almost in my face. So I have a scar on my arm after <laughs> some uh, hot metallic parts, which was, uh, was uh, yeah. Uh, which hit, hit me in the arm and uh, it almost the paper from the capacitor was uh, yeah almost like confetti in my workshop it was uh, not a very nice uh, feeling really it it, uh, it sounds like a gunshot and uh, if i had standing more right above it my uh, my eyes yeah I no I can't think about that so with the new uh, components uh, it's time for um, the last uh, part the, the thread tension on um, upper thread there uh, on on this old machine, I always um, always uh, remove it, and and what you're not seeing here is that uh, after um, yeah here I line up the the plate there, so it's directly in the middle of, um, of the groove there. But uh, I, uh, I of course, the whole machine I have uh, vacuum cleaned and I have used compressed air and uh, and uh, cleaned it. Uh, so, so the top there and uh, all the machine have been uh, been uh, cleaned. So now it's time for testing the long stitch. And uh, you can see that uh, with uh, over there, the needle bar is just every second stitch is uh, going up and down, and there it's every fifth stitch. So you can see the uh, thread lever; it's it's not following the needle bar every time, but every second second time or every fifth time and a new lead bulb of course every bulb uh, I replace with the lead bulb it's it's uh, better light these bulbs light have, have a light strength the, uh, they they have the same light as a 30 watt bulb instead of 15 watt which is the maximum um, um, maximum bulb you can have in these machines so there it is i hope you enjoyed taking a look at this and uh, have a really nice day